Hola estudiantes, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Bienvenidos, bienvenidas. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what we have to do this week, okay? And uh, I'm going to show you um, LTK a little bit. Remember that when you log in, okay, um, you have to, for example, if, if this is the first time that you are putting your uh, code, okay, the one that you purchased or the provisional one, you have to type here the code, the provisional code, okay, of right here. Once you hit redeem, it's going to ask you for the class and that code that you need to find my section is posted on Blackboard, okay? Bien, so once that is done, you will have access to LTK, the textbook online, and also well, the activities that I assigned for this week. Okay, we are going to complete chapter four. Um, so you're going to see your courses. Uh, over here, of course, you're seeing my version, so it's a little bit different. And um, my classes. Here is basically what you are, um, what you are going, where you are going to find your section. And then, of course, again, you're seeing mine. So, um, when you select calendar, you're going to see all the activities that are, are assigned for this week. Okay. Remember, our week is going to start Tuesdays and it's going to end on Mondays. Okay, so that's why you have the first set of activities due on June 8th. Okay, it's important that at the top of the page you select all courses. Okay, all courses. So you're going to be able to see all the activities, the activities that I have selected. Okay. Um, and of course, you're going to see a bunch of activities, but many of them can be done very quickly. Okay. So do not feel overwhelmed. Study the material. Open the book. Open the textbook. ¿verdad? On Unidad Uno. ¿verdad? Bienvenidos. And study everything. Try to do some activities here for practice and then go to LTK and do the activities. Remember that once you open LTK and you select an activity, you have you have um, three chances to do this activity. So my suggestion is, if you want to get a good grade, do not start um, opening them and answering without not knowing what you're doing. Okay, my suggestion is complete the, the, the textbook, some activities from the textbook, and then come over here and put everything into practice. Remember that um, at the end, what we want is to develop a linguistic competence. So try to avoid completing these exercises with your book open. Challenge yourself, okay? Use these to make sure that you are memorizing the information, okay? Um, and once it's done, let's say, let, let me answer this incorrectly. Once that is done, you can go back, study, and try to get a better score. Okay. And then you can go back and redo it, okay? Make sure that you are submitting the activity, okay? Bien. Um, so that's about LTK, okay?
Okay. Let's go back to the calendar. Okay. And there you will see all of them. If you, let's say you want to make sure that you have done all of them, my suggestion is to go to this part that is going to say um, LTK, right? And then there you will see all the activities that you have to complete. But also, make sure that you select the online workbook, okay? Because then you have other exercises there. So that's why I'm telling you, go to the calendar. There you will see everything together, okay, at once. This is another way to access um, the activities. Bien, now let's talk about... Um, <clears throat> the book and the activities that we have to complete for this week. So this week, we are, we are going to learn some uh, basic material. We are going to say hello, we are going to say goodbyes, we are going to make introductions, give your age, um, and say where you're from, ask others information about themselves, identify, use um, some common professions, and express dates and phone numbers. So we are going to learn the numbers. Okay. And for these kind of activities, what I want you to start doing is um, paying attention to the, the images. Remember, we are going to start decoding. And one way to start decoding is paying attention to the pictures. Okay, pay attention to the pictures, um, and that will contextualize what it's on the other side. In this part, basically, you are going to complete sentences, okay? So my suggestion is to do that exercise, and then follow along as you listen. To be able to hear the audio, Remember that you have to go to, um, let's see, you have to go to LTK, LTK resources, okay, and there you will see student audio, uh, book audio, and student book, uh, book video. So you hit audio. And then look for track number 10. And this is the one that you're going to use for this exercise. Okay. Bien. Read along. That will develop your listening skills. And this is something that we really have to develop. Um, the same thing for 1.3. Okay. Listen. So you can start developing your listening skills. Then for this one, the same thing. Listen. So pay a lot of attention to how they pronounce. Um, try to repeat. Okay. And start memorizing some things here and there. Okay. Um, this is about true or false after... Uh, reading those um, expressions and then in this one again more reading I mean more um, listening so go back and try to complete the exercise so you are training yourself to develop that listening skill I'll be here these are very important como se llama el como se llama ella como se llama Remember, in this case, we're talking about another person, okay? If we're talking to that person specifically and we are asking that person what is your name, then, ¿cómo te llamas? Pay attention how it's changing. ¿Cómo se llama él? Because it's about 
another person versus cómo te llamas, okay? Bien, here you will see that kind of interaction, okay? Memorize the questions and the expressions. Hola, me llamo, and then you put your name. Me llamo Marilyn, ¿qué tal? And then the other one, hola, muy bien, gracias. Yo soy Eva, y este es Carlos. Pay attention, she's using soy, soy. Make connections with things that you know. So, for example, you are acquainted with soy. If you go to a Chinese restaurant or a Japanese restaurant or a Korean restaurant, they are going to have soy sauce. So, since you know that, make connections. It will help you to recall the, the word when you need it. Okay? And that's how we, um, we record information in our long-term memory. Okay? So, hola, Carlos, ¿qué tal? And then, muy bien, encantado. You see, Carlos is saying encantado because he is masculine, okay? And he feels delighted. Muy bien, encantado. And then, he is asking, ¿estudias aquí en la universidad? Remember, he is asking her, okay? ¿Estudias en la universidad? And then, when she is replying, she is saying, sí. Estudio. Pay attention. How is changing the verb? Okay. In English, you will see those changes. For example, um, in the third person. For example, um, to run. I run and she runs. To talk. I talk and she talks. It's the same thing here. We're going to start seeing some changes when another person is doing the action. So if I do the action, my action usually is going to end with an O. So that's why we have um, estudio, okay, estudio. And eventually you will see hablo, hablo español, okay. Bien. In this section, there you have more structure and more vocabulary. This is the structure that I'm going to be uh, expecting for voice thread, the writing activity, but also the um, the quiz, nothing else, okay? Oh, because uh, I learned this other word and I want to use it. Not, not now, because I want to make sure that you have learned what we're learning, okay? And then at the end of the semester, maybe we can start adding other stuff, okay? But not for the quizzes, not for the final, not for the activities, okay? So this is what I'm going to evaluate. This is what you have to memorize, okay? A ver, so again, hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué tal estás? And pay attention. Here we have two forms, the informal and the formal, okay? So the informal is going to be used when you're talking to a friend, when you're talking to um, your family, but then the formal is going to be used when you're talking to people that you don't know, especially clients. It's very important to treat your client in a respectful way. So you want to show them that you're using the formal approach, okay? So... You can use, of course, buenos dias, buenas tardes, and buenas noches in an informal setting, but it's expected in a formal um, setting, okay? And you can say, hola, soy, again, the soy sauce, or you can say, hola, me llamo, and then you say your name, me llamo Marilyn, soy Marilyn, or the one that I was um, teaching you at the beginning of the semester. Mi nombre es Marilyn. Okay. Bien. Um, so here you can say soy or me llamo. And you can use it in the informal um, setting as well as the formal one. Okay. And then if you want to introduce someone, these are the expressions. Mira, este es Dan. Mira, es, este, ese es, este, ese es Juan, ¿ok? Mira, esta es Jenny, ¿ok? 
ok? Versus, mire, le presento al señor. Mire, le presento a, ¿verdad? Now you are introducing another person. If you want to respond to a presentation, you can say, ¿qué tal? In a formal um, setting, it's expected, it's necessary to use encantado, encantada, como está, o mucho gusto. Okay? These are expected. Uh, can you use them in an informal approach? Yes. In an informal setting, they can be used. Okay? Now, if you want to say goodbye, adios, hasta luego, hasta mañana, hasta pronto. See? After that, you can practice here. ¿Verdad? Um, activity 1.4. And then start thinking how you can introduce another person. Okay? To the professor or to another friend. Okay? Bien. Um, in the next activity, then we have vocabulario of nationalities. Okay? And um, it's important that we start recognizing those nationalities. Here, what you are going to do is basically identify the country, okay? And once it, it's done, uh, I urge you to do it without looking at anything. Just try to identify what you don't know. And then you open the book again, find um, some responses at the beginning of chapter zero and take a look what you're doing wrong and then what can be improved okay um so that's to identify the countries and then in this section is to um identify nationality and learn nationality this is presented in a way that you can start producing vocabulary by knowing some elements and and then classifying everything okay pay attention when we say estados unidos we for the nationality we don't say americano or americana it's politically incorrect because as i think i mentioned before in this class estados unidos is part of the continent estados unidos is not the continent okay So, uh, of course, we can use one that is more specific and is estadounidense, okay, for hombre and for mujer. But for now, we can keep norteamericano, norteamericana. And again, pay attention, this, the meaning of norteamericano, norteamericana means a person from North America, okay. Bien, and then we have chileno. And then you, you're supposed to finish, okay, following the patterns. Pay attention to patterns. So if we have the masculine ending with O and then some feminines ending with A, what are you going to say, for example, for Mexico? So if you have Mexicana, it will be what? Mexicano, okay? Bien. And also... Pay attention to those exclamation marks. They are going to save your life <laughs> in some way, okay, in this class, because they are going to give you some information, very important information. So read those exclamation marks. And then go back to the LTK and listen, okay? It's important that you develop that skill, the listening skill. Here... We, we were supposed to practice in a face-to-face -face class. Como se llama? And then the donde es? Remember, we're talking about another person. So, como se llama él? Como se llama ella? Okay? The donde es? We're talking about a third person. We're not talking about myself or we are not asking a second person, a, a you person, ¿verdad? Uh, So, for example, ¿cómo se llama? The first one, se llama Shakespeare. Again, we're talking about a third person. Uh, ¿De dónde es? Es inglés. Here, I'm providing the nationality. Es inglés. Es de Inglaterra. Es inglés. 
Ella. ¿Cómo se llama? Se llama Mona Lisa. ¿De dónde es? Ella es de Italia. Es italiana, etcétera, etcétera, etcétera. Okay. In this section, it's important for you to read, contextualize. Here you have some professions. Ingeniero, ingeniera, profesor, profesora. ¿verdad? Here we have some cognates too, ¿verdad? Futbolista, futbolista for both, femenino and masculino. Médico, médica, escritor, escritora, cantante, cantante, actor, actriz, tenista, tenista, estudiante, estudiante. So organize them by the endings. What do you see? What patterns do you see? Pay attention, for example, ista. Those are that are ending with ista, like futbolista, tenista. It remains for both, for femenino and masculino. Okay? And then um, identify these uh, people that you see in the picture. ¿Qué son? Try to match, ¿verdad? What you see here with the pictures. Decode. And then try to complete what they are saying here with the information that was presented before. Now, whenever you see these blue boxes, those are extremely important for this class. This is the information that you really, really have to memorize. Okay. Again. Here we have the exclamation marks and it's giving you more information about, in this case, los apellidos, okay? And then, ¿cómo te llamas? If you want to ask a second person, his or her name, ¿cómo te llamas? Your name, right? And then, me llamo Francisca. Again, you can say, soy Francisca or mi nombre es Francisca. ¿De dónde eres? Soy de México, soy mexicana. Here in the first part, I'm giving the origin. Pay attention. We have the soy sauce, and immediately after the, the, the soy, <laughs> we have de, which is expressing from. If you don't have de and you keep soy Mexico, then that person becomes me Mexico, okay? And we cannot have that because it's changing the idea. The whole idea is changing. So you need to say soy de Mexico. Besides that, in the question, we have de, de donde eres. So, keep the de in your answer. And then, soy mexicana. Now, you don't need the de because you're not saying the origin. You're saying the nationality. Okay? And then, donde vives? Vivo en Puebla. Vivo en la calle Reina. Vivo en la calle 10. Okay? ¿Qué haces? What do you do? Soy estudiante. Soy means I am. ¿Verdad? Soy. I am. Soy estudiante. You can use the yo, which is I. Or in Spanish, we can avoid the I. Okay? And we, we can avoid the yo. Okay? And by saying soy, everything is implied. And then you have a complete sentence. Here, listen again. Pay a lot of attention to those uh, listening activities so you can start developing the listening skills. And then the numbers. Play the audio and listen. Listen to the pronunciation and study them. Okay? Do the activity. And again, listen. Listen to the month of the year. Enero, febrero, etc., etc. Okay? And then classify, organize the information. ¿Cuándo? ¿Cuándo es el día de San Valentín? ¿Cuándo es el día de Navidad? ¿Cuándo? ¿Cuándo es tu cumpleaños? And again, pay attention to the exclamation mark. In this section, in this, in this, uh, on this page, we have more Structure. ¿Cómo te llamas? We have seen that already, ¿verdad? Me llamo Francisca. And then, ¿cuándo es tu cumpleaños? ¿Cuándo? And then, to answer, es el 11 de mayo. ¿Cuándo es Navidad? 
is el 25 de diciembre. Pay attention, mayo is not written with uppercase, it's with lowercase. All the months, all the days in Spanish are written with lower cases. Nationality, lower cases. Okay? And then, ¿cuántos años tiene? So these are basic information that you need to know when you're learning Spanish. ¿Cuál es tu número de teléfono? Es el bla, 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 bla. Okay? And then you provide numbers. Tengo 20 años. Tengo 15 años. Another um, detail. Tengo in Spanish is to express uh, the age, but also is the verb that is expressing possession. In English, to say your age, you don't use the verb to have, which is the one that we use in Spanish. Okay? Keep that in mind. In Spanish, we use another verb to express age and that verb will be to have tengo i have tengo and then tengo is for yo first person and then tiene is for another person ella tiene 15 años él tiene 3 años cuántos años tiene marcos cuántos años tiene la profesora Again, in English, you're using the verb to be. In Spanish, we are going to be using the verb to have. And of course, you can use the verb to express possession. Yo tengo una mochila. Yo tengo um, muchos estudiantes. ¿Sí? Bien. And a very important question. ¿Cuál es tu número de teléfono? ¿Cuál es tu número de celular? ¿Verdad? Because eventually you want to establish communication outside of the classroom. See? Bien. And then this is en vivo. Some uh, Spanish within context that you can watch. Uh, on LTK. See? And then try to do the activities if you want to really, really want to develop your listening skills and the linguistic skills. Okay? Now, here we start the grammar section, okay? In the grammar section, they are going to explain to you specific points. In this case, it's about definite and indefinite articles, okay? In Spanish, we use the in front of a noun, the book, the notebook, a notebook, some notebook. Okay, so this is what you are going to learn here. That we use el, la, ¿verdad? Los will be plural and las will be plural for the feminine. And then un cuaderno, a notebook. And then una mochila, ¿sí? So you can read about that and try to do some activities here. Another verb that is extremely, extremely important is this one. I. H-A-Y. Okay, that's the pronunciation. I. Remember, the H in Spanish is silent. Hay una mochila. So I, I can ask you, ¿qué hay en el salón de clases? ¿Qué hay? And then you can reply by saying, hay un lápiz. Hay una computadora. Hay... Unos estudiantes. Remember, I means there is, there are. Okay? And another extremely important verb is ser. Okay? Ser. The idea is to be. To be or not to be. We are going to be using ser to express nationalities, origin, and to define ¿verdad? To define ourselves, to tell our professions, um, to tell our names. So when we tell our names and we say our professions, we are defining ourselves. Who are we? ¿verdad? Uh, so yo will be the pronoun for myself. 
Okay, yo soy, and then you connect the soy sauce. Yo soy estudiante, yo soy profesora. Tú, tú will be the second person. You, you are, tú eres, tú eres. Usted, usted es. And remember, tú and usted, they mean the same thing. It means you. What is the difference? One is formal and the other one is informal, okay? Tú is informal, okay? Bien. And then, él, ella, él, ella, he and she, él, ella, es. Nosotros, if I'm included in a group, I will be saying nosotros or nosotras. If the, if the group is all, is all um, feminine, the uh, females, then nosotras, okay? Vosotros, that will be the you all, is mainly used in Spain, not in America Latina. In America Latina, we use ustedes for you all. We keep that one for formal and informal, okay? And then we have ellos, ellas, they, okay? Masculine, ellos, or a mixed group, and then ellas, all feminine, okay? There you have some other explanations. And then, yo soy, tú eres, usted es, él, ella es. Pay attention. Usted and él y ella, they share the same conjugations. See? And then, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ustedes y ellos son. They share the same conjugation again. Here you have some other explanations that I want you to read in this activity. Remember, for this activity, we are talking about Pamela. So we are not using the yo form. We are talking about her. So we should use the third person form, which is ella. Okay? So esta es Pamela. And then you keep using the the el the, I'm sorry, the ella form, okay, of the verb said. And over here, the second part, it's about nosotros. So this person is talking about nosotros, but eventually is going to start talking about specific members of the group. Okay, so keep that in mind. And after that, you can do some of these activities if you want. Remember, I suggest you, I strongly suggest you to do them, so... You are familiarized with the material before before going to LTK and try to complete some activities there. And then here we have two two more verbs. We will have llamarse, and then we have tener. Okay, study them. Study how they behave. Okay, acá llamarse is the infinitive form. It's the basic form of the verb. In English, will be to be called. Or another example of an infinitive in English will be to run, to, to eat, to sleep. Okay, those are infinitives. Then you conjugate the verb. You're limiting the verb to a specific person. I sleep. Okay, I eat. She eats. When you do that, you're conjugating the verb. You can see this once you use the verb to be in English because you see all the, the perspectives conjugated. For example, I am, she is, um, you are, etc. And then you will see all those changes. In Spanish, um, you're going to start seeing that every time that you're talking about yourself, the verb usually ends with a no. And to with an S. Tú te llamas. And then usted, without the S. Usted se llama. Él se llama. Nosotros nos llamamos. Vosotros os llamáis. Ustedes se llaman. Y ellos se llaman. Every time that we have double L, we pronounce J. The double L as J. ¿Verdad? Me llamo. ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo Alberto. ¿Cómo se llama ella? Se llama... Maria. And then we have the verb tener. Finally, this is the last part. Now, remember that I said in English you use the verb 
to be. In Spanish, we are going to be using the verb tener to express age. Okay, to express age. Yo tengo 15 años. Yo tengo 20 años. Yo tengo 30 años. And then, tú tienes. Usted tiene, ella o él tiene, nosotros tenemos, vosotros tenéis, ustedes tienen o ellas y ellos tienen 15 años, ¿sí? Remember, without años, um, then the idea here is possession. I have, I have a computer. Tengo una computadora. Tengo un estudiante. Tengo... Um, un lápiz, ¿sí? Bien. Then you can complete um, actividad 1.7 and start um, creating questions. Practice, okay? Practice how to create questions. How do you say, uh, how do you ask, ¿verdad? How do you ask someone's name? How do you ask someone How old are you? What is your name? What is your origin? What do you do? Okay. What do you have in your backpack? ¿Qué hay, verdad? ¿Qué hay en tu mochila? Bien, jóvenes. So, I think this is the material that we have for this week. At the end of the of the chapter you're going to find a list oh you have sabor latino of course which is something that you must read okay to develop your your listening skills and uh and then at the end here this is on page 39 you will have The vocabulary, not the structure, but, well, some structures. The vocabulary, okay, here. So my suggestion is go to this page regularly and study it, okay? Try to find the best way for you to learn, to memorize, okay? Bien, so that's all for now. Hasta luego. Ciao.